Welcome to yet another episode of Beyond the Present Podcast. My name is Daniel Mulgan, and today we're talking about a new phenomenon. That's right. The millennials are living paycheck to paycheck. We haven't seen this trend at such a popular rate throughout you know, the modern history. It's just really incredible to see. And today, I want to talk about personal finance management and how we can actually help these millennials to get back on the track and to be actually in control of their finances. Ladies and gentlemen, your finances determine the very quality of your life every single day. Most of us, we don't like to talk about money because the topic is very, you know, kind of emotionally charged. We say like, well, you know what? I don't know about that. I mean, I I shouldn't talk about money. It's so inappropriate or something. Well, the fact of the matter is that if you're not in control of money, then money controls you. And let me tell you this. If you are living a life where money controls you, this means you have no freedom. This means you have no ability to choose your future. And more importantly, you might end up spending your time doing things that you might hate doing just to make a living. And today, let's talk about how the millennials, and ideally even Generation Z, uh, could perhaps take the steps necessary to take control of their finances. First of all, let's talk about what it really means to manage your personal and uh, basically family's finances. You see, guys, in life, you have to be able to plan your budgets and to plan your income and your expenses Otherwise, you will be constantly worried about money because money is a hygiene factor. What is a hygiene factor? It means it is something that if you don't have enough of it, you will think of nothing but that thing. So, for example, think of the last time you were super hungry. You haven't eaten, you know, in a couple of days, maybe even you were traveling all the time and you had no access to food. So you were pretty hungry. You see, at that level, when you're extremely hungry, you think of nothing but food. So your focus and your concentration is literally laser focused on only one thing, food. I need to eat something, right? Because food is a hygiene factor. It means below a certain level, once you don't have enough of it, then you think of nothing but that thing. However, if you, you know, let's just say, you know, you finish your meal and now you've had your lunch or dinner. After that, you no longer think about food anymore because now you have eaten enough so you can actually focus on other things in life. Money is exactly like that. If you are under the poverty line or if you are living paycheck to paycheck with constant anxiety about whether or not you can make it to the end of the month, then believe it or not, you will spend most of your time thinking about money especially lack of money, and that creates a very, very negative emotional state that ultimately leads to depression, anxiety, bad relationships, breakups, and many other problems. So if you want to have a happy, productive life, you must bring that subject of money, especially personal finance, under full control. Otherwise, you will be living your life constantly having to react to, oh my gosh, the price. Have you seen, you know, these uh, people in the stores like, can you believe that? The butter's gotten 2% more expensive than last year. And they're always complaining about these little prices. Well, the problem is these people don't understand that it's not about the prices going up. It's about they uh, being able to manage their finances so they can actually not have to worry so much about money. So today we're going to talk about the basics and the foundations of personal finance for the millennials and Generation Z so that they actually uh, take control of their finances. The first thing and most important thing, basically, when it comes to personal finance is what we call managing the delta. Now, what is a delta? Essentially, whatever your job, income, uh, basically, or uh, investments are, every single day, month, week, or year, you have a certain amount of money coming in. Now you're saying, well, Dan, I actually I'm unemployed, so I get, you know, I get some uh, handouts from my parents or something. It doesn't really matter. Even if you receive some handouts from your parents, you are still you know, uh, someone with an income. Now, it could be a very low income, but you do have that income from your parents, for example, right? Uh, or maybe you're working in business and you have a very you know, uh, six-figure income perhaps every month or every year. It doesn't really matter. We all have a certain amount of income. Now, the problem is this. Most of us, we don't understand the importance of delta or what we say, the amount that is left from, uh, you know, the difference between your income and your expenses. So unfortunately, most people around the world, they essentially spend whatever they earn 
oftentimes with a bit of credit on the side. And it's actually a very common phenomenon. I remember actually I just got a new credit card uh, from a new international bank. And I just wanted to test this credit card to see how well it works. And I took this to a restaurant. I wanted to pay for my meal with a credit card just to try and test this credit card. And you had to look at the, you know, look at the, you know, the eyes of that uh, basically uh, uh, you know, waiter. He was so surprised. Like, sir, do you really want to pay for your meal with a credit card? I mean, you don't have any cash on you right now? Are things that, you know, difficult? And then I explained, oh, listen, man, I'm actually trying to see if this credit card actually works because I just got it issued, you know, in, in a new country. I want to see if it works. And that's a clear example of people using credit that is borrowing money for consumer purchases, food, items, I don't know, gadgets and so on. And they wonder why they're getting poorer and poorer and their life gets worse and worse. You see, in life, either you have a positive delta, meaning your expenses are below your income, which means at every basically uh, periodic, basically uh, aspect of your work and income, you have a certain amount of money left. Whether we count this as, you know, every month, every quarter, or every year, at the end of that period, you have excess money in your bank account or in your wallet or under your pillow or whatever, right? This is the foundation of control over your finances. And unfortunately, most of us, especially millennials, are simply fully uh, unaware of its importance, Because their parents, the baby boomers, they knew about the importance of this, so they actually practiced it. But most millennials grew up in a very prosperous world. Post-World War II, everything is going up, things are great, no need, cheap credit, let's do it. And unfortunately, the same pattern is now being repeated by Generation Z. The problem is this. When you spend everything that you earn, and a bit of credit on the side for some, you know, flashy new gadget or something, here's the problem. You will never have any excess cash, i.e. delta, to use for financial independence. As I've said many times, you will never get rich through income alone, no matter how high that income is. You could be earning a lot of money every month and spend all of it to maintain your lifestyle. But if you don't have any excess cash left, you are simply poor. One of my mentors, Grant Cardone, he says, teach yourself to live on 20 to 40% of your income and keep the rest for paying your taxes and for investments. So imagine whatever your man is like, but dude, Daniel, you're talking about living on my 40%. I have trouble living on my 200%. If I, if I even doubled my income, it would still not be enough to maintain my lifestyle. Well, if you have such problems, and believe me, that's not a very rare problem. Nowadays, many people have this problem. It's simply because you are not managing your lifestyle properly. This means you're living above your means. You're trying to be, you know, to to somehow, you know, look rich instead of being rich. And that's a serious problem. I see, you know, people who are working at, you know, literally minimum wage jobs, and they go and buy the latest flashy uh, iPhone, Pro Max, whatever, and they show it on Instagram, even though that you know, iPhone is probably worth their three, four months of salary. And I say, so come here, man, or come here, you know, uh, gal, do you really think looking rich is going to actually make you feel better in the long run? Do you really think that, you know, spending all that money on things you can't afford to feel good now will actually make you, you know, feel better a couple of years down the line. So the first thing you have to learn from today is the art of disciplining yourself and making sure that you have a lifestyle in proportion to your income. Now, understand this. You might be saying, but Dan, I, I'm very ambitious. I, I know I have a very low salary right now, but I'm really going to work on myself and I will improve my income. Okay, that's a great promise. But you should first generate that income and then increase your lifestyle. That's the problem with a lot of us. So what we do is we first get inspired and motivated and we say, you know what? I'm going to double my income the next couple of you know, months or even years and I will work on it. But for now, to give myself that motivation, I'm going to just buy that awesome car on credit or I'm going to just get a lot of cool stuff or I'm going to start traveling like crazy, like these millionaires. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a lot of cool stuff. Well, understand this. If you act like you are rich right now when you're not, then you will never ever have the opportunity to actually increase your income 
because you will be so concerned about maintaining your lifestyle and so worried as to lose it, you will never have the freedom to take a step back from your current business or career to think, okay, how can we actually increase our income or how can we change our job or career? Because you're going to pay the bills. You don't even have that mental freedom and level of creativity to allow you to increase your income. So you're just going to you know, waste your time and be in the same job, underpaid and underappreciated. For that reason, the first step to financial greatness is being honest with yourself. You can show your flashy gadgets on Instagram and rent a Lambo and pretend that that's your car. You can, you know, uh, you know, take a photo from a tiny little private jet that your friend actually, uh, you know, rented for the whole family and pretend like, yeah, I'm super rich. You can do these things and, you know, get a bit of jolt of, you know, shallow happiness uh, from your followers on Instagram. You could do these things, of course, but think about the long term. Because that strategy in the long term will not help you so much. So instead of trying to act or pretend to be rich, let's plan to make you really rich. Because guys, believe it or not, I think everyone should plan to be rich because nothing good comes out of poverty. Nothing good comes out of worrying about money. Nothing good comes out of always asking yourself, can I afford this? Don't you want to live a lifestyle where you never, ever have to worry about a price tag? Isn't that your target? Because to get there, you have to start planning for it. So instead of trying to pretend to be rich, why don't we actually plan for it and start from today? And the first step is this. Adjust your current lifestyle with your current income, not your possible future income that I'm going to break it, I'm going to have a breakthrough. No, because that's you know very possible, but maybe it's not going to happen. So I know a lot of people, they say, oh, Dan, actually, you know what? You I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to start my own business right now. So I'm going to first go get all the cool suits and I'm going to you know, get the cool car and all those things. And I'm going to feel like an entrepreneur. I say, dude, the time to buy those fancy suits is after you have made the money, not now. Keep your simple t-shirt, start working on your business, see if the income is being generated Because the majority of businesses fail in their first year of establishment. See if you're not one of those statistics. And then if your income actually got increased, why not? You can increase your lifestyle with it according to a proportion of that income. Again, not all of it, but a proportion. So most of the millionaires and uh, decamillionaires uh, that I know, they usually like to live on 20 to 40% of their income. And they keep the rest for taxes and for investment. The same thing applies to you. So whatever your income is right now, whether you're working, you know, at, at a campus in your college, whether you have a nine to five job, whether you're doing minimum wage, are you working at McDonald's, doesn't really matter. Ask yourself, all right, what is my current level of income? The first step is you ask yourself, how can I now create a lifestyle? So I'm going to rent a place uh, in this neighborhood to reduce the cost by, I don't know, for example, 70%. And I'm going to, you know, stop using, you know, driving uh, cars. Instead, I'm going to simply use the public transport port or whatever it is to reduce my expenses temporarily so that I can have excess cash on the side. Then after you've reduced your uh, basically costs and you've matched it with your real income today, then you have this advantage called having a Delta plus life. So the majority of the world's population live with zero or minus delta. It means at the end of each month or year, they are left with, you guessed it, zero dollars in their account. Sometimes they actually keep going under debt. You want to be the exception. You want to be in the top 20% of the world's population, and especially the top 4%, which have over 20 to 40% delta every uh, month and every year. So you say, all right, this is now my income. I'm going to manage my life still according to it. It doesn't matter how low it is. After you've done so, you move on to the second step. All right. How can I increase my income? You see, after you have brought your expenses down and below your current income, you then ask yourself the next uh, basically question. How can I increase my income? Because now since your income is below, basically, is not below your uh, expenses, you don't have that anxiety and worries of paying your bills. So you can think creatively out of the box. Maybe you have a very great idea for a business or for a store or whatever it is, right? Now you can think out of the box without worrying about your bills 
And then you think of creative ways to increase your income. Could be starting a you know, side business, could be I don't know, doing some tradings online. Whatever it is, you now can do this because you have excess cash at the end of every month. Now, that excess cash could be very little. It could be as little as a few hundred bucks. It doesn't have to be like you know, millions of dollars. But that few hundreds of bucks every month is going to reassure you of the possibility of expanding your basically life in the future. And then you start working on increasing your level of income. And here's the fun part. Once you have no stress and worries about paying the bills, it becomes a lot easier to find new ways of generating income, to get promoted in your work, to start you know, making more money. And as your income goes up, hold and behold, you can also gradually increase your standard of living in a way that you will still have delta. So for example, let's say you were working at McDonald's and you were being you know, paid minimum wage. Let's say, I don't know, uh, 1500 bucks a month or something, right? Now you bring your, you know, basically expenses down to 1200 bucks a month and you got $300 every month as Delta. As you think clearly about your life, maybe you get a great idea of perhaps starting a new business or getting a new job on the side and you increase your income to, let's say, $2,000 a month or $3,000 a month. Now you can also increase your lifestyle because you can stick to that you know, portion. You say, okay, I'm going to save at least 20% of my income. So if your income goes up, the 80% that you spend can also go up. And then you can move on to buying fancier stuff or moving to a better neighborhood and so on. But most people, they put the carriage before the horse. So they first make the expenses and then they say, all right, now I'm motivated to find a way to make some you know, extra bucks. Well, that's actually a very wrong and failing strategy. So once you work on making your income in a basically higher, now you can gradually increase your uh, basically uh, expenses. And the third and most important phase, investment. As you keep saving a small portion of your uh, basically income and gradually increase it, you now have what we call capital. And capital is the foundation for wealth. Because capital can be used for investment and investments allow your value and your basically net worth to go up over time. Capital is responsible for all forms of prosperity in the modern history. And once you have access to capital, because when you, let's say you make a, I don't know, 200 bucks, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, 2000 bucks, for example, or whatever it is, depending on the country, some countries it could be as little as 100 bucks a month. Some could be, you know, the minimum wage could be like 4,000, right? It doesn't really matter. If you don't have any capital, and capital is excess cash that you do not need to pay the bills, only then you can tap in the power of wealth because you can use that capital to invest and get something in return. Now, what are different types of investment? From my point of view, the very best type of investment actually is education. So you take that money and you say, you know what? I'm currently working at McDonald's, but after about two years of, you know, work, living below my means and saving some money, now I actually can, you know, get a new master's with that money. Let's go do it. And I can actually not only not flip burgers anymore, I can actually get a job as a, you know, manager here in McDonald's, for example, right? So I think of education to be the best form of investment. And do you think what's the second best form of investment? You guessed it, real estate. And and my friends are like, but then you can't invest in real estate with only 5,000, 6,000 bucks. Actually, it is possible because in reality, you can use the leverage of mortgage to your advantage and get much, much more out of your bucks, basically, right? For that reason, it depends on you. Some people love cryptocurrencies, some like stock market. That is up to you. But in order to even discuss what to invest your money on, you should first have a capital. And the way to get your capital is to live below your means and have delta at the end of every period. Of course, once you do all these things, you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck like most millennials, as was announced recently on Bloomberg. That's right. This was an official news, and it said that the majority of millennials, and of course, Generation Z, are now living paycheck to paycheck. This has to end now because a world that we want to have in the future, the world of prosperity that we, you know, yearn for, it's only possible if our millennials and Generation Z are not constantly worried about paying their bills, 
and are not always living above their means just to impress other people. So they're going to do what? That's right. They buy things they know they can't afford with money they do not have to impress the people they don't even like. Let's change that. And if this article by Bloomberg shocked you, as I'm sure it definitely shocked a lot of people, then it better give you the motivation to start taking control of your life and to start being one of the you know exceptions to this current phenomenon and to actually find a way to avoid the trap of living from paycheck to paycheck. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for. Hope this you know, little program is going to help you to start taking the steps necessary to take control of your finances because if money is controlling you, then you can never control your life. And the only way to control your life is to know how to spend and manage your finances. All right, guys, this, uh, that's it. I wish you guys a very prosperous uh, day ahead and hopefully you will take the steps necessary to improve the quality of your life and to hopefully start taking the path towards financial freedom. Have a good one.